Today on Locked on Wild, we talk about what Ryan Hartman, Jordan Greenway, and Matt Dumba can do to erase a rough first half of the season. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Just as a reminder, you can find Locked On Wild on all of your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we look at three players who underachieved in the first half of the season and what they can do to turn the tide. We'll also attach a popular song to each to help get the message across. Today's episode of Locked On Wild is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. As the Wilds continue to enjoy the all-star break to gear up for a what will, will be a frantic push down the stretch, we are going to look today at a few players who can use the all-star break to refocus and try to put together a better performance from what they had in the first part of the season. We'll start today by talking about Jordan Greenway. And for Greenway, I think it's really simple with what Jordan Greenway needs to uh, needs to do and needs to show here in the second half to kind of get him back on track and to uh, to help the team out down the stretch. And it's just as simple as for Greenway. We just need to see it look like he gives a bleep to be out there. Uh, too many times during the first half of the season, just seems like is kind of just just there. Is just out there on the ice, skating around, and uh, and not really factoring much into the overall game plan. And what does Jordan Greenway bring to the table above all else? His size and his physicality. And we've just hit over and over and over the fact that it doesn't seem like he uses it to his full advantage, the arsenal that he has um, at his disposal. Just doesn't seem like he puts it out there on the ice enough. And so I don't know if that's an injury situation still stemming from the early part of the season in which he uh, he missed the first handful of games of the year, then kind of re-injured. Um, the other shoulder and was uh, was set back even further. So maybe that's part of the factor as to why we just don't see it. But Greenway's got to get into this uh, sort of mindset too as the season unfolds is that what the Wild are seeing from him other teams are seeing too. And so Greenway is putting out there on the ice. He is auditioning for a spot on this roster beyond this season. Has fallen out of favor with how things have happened this year, missing team meetings, showing up to the arena, uh, showing up to the arena late and just not producing at all. That all that stuff all kind of sours your opinion of a particular player out there on the ice, no matter what they're doing to produce. And when you're not producing, that stuff is magnified. And so if the rumors are true that Greenway will potentially be shopped at or around the trade deadline, Greenway is playing for his next team as well. If Bill Guerin has already made the decision that Greenway is, is going to get moved, and even if he hasn't, you got to show on the ice that you are capable of being part of the future, part of a new group of players, part of the solution 
as opposed to part of the problem. And so for Greenway, we're going to give him a song as well as we'll do for the other two players in Matt Dumba and Ryan Hartman, just to kind of attach to and um, and keep that message going here throughout the second half of the season. And for Greenway, it's hit me with your best shot. It's that easy. Just show some of that fire and some of that that physicality that we have seen at points throughout Greenway's career, but we really have not seen it. Uh, we've we haven't seen it extend to to the extent of a f- long stretch of time. We saw last year where there were kind of some rumors too, or there it was looking like Greenway's play was was falling off a little bit, and then all of a sudden it kind of clicked and he took off and was just great offensively contributing as well. We need to see that again. And so Greenway needs to view this as an opportunity, whether it be here or elsewhere, because with how this team is, is approaching uh, the next couple of seasons, as we move further and further towards the, um, or closer and closer to the end of the Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter contracts, there are going to be some tough choices that will be made by this team in the offseason and beyond. And if Greenway doesn't show the ability to consistently help the team out, he's going to end up being one of the things that Bill Guerin does to try to keep somebody else around. And so it really comes down to just an audition at this point. We have seen a lot of it over the last few years. We've seen flashes, but not the whole product. And so for Jordan Greenway, this is either a case to stay the rest of the season, or it's an audition for somebody else here uh, in the off season. Greenway, since the month, uh, since the month of January started, has had one game in which he's had over three hits. That was against the New York Rangers. He had seven, including a block as well. But we're seeing too many of the games of zero hits. I mean, against the Philadelphia Flyers, no hits, two shots, and was a minus one. You got to do more to impact the game than simply being present on the ice. And so let's see more of the hits. Let's see more of the body thrown. Let's see a little bit of the fire and the urgency from Greenway as we gear up for the start of this second half. Because if we don't, then he is likely gone. And the Wild will look to fill that spot internally, or they'll bring somebody in along the Ryan Reeves line to to fill that spot. Show us. Or don't. The choice is entirely up to uh, to Jordan Greenway here as the uh, the second half kicks off. So for Greenway, it's as simple as hit me with your best shot. Use that physicality and just show a little bit of fire out there on the ice that you understand that this situation is entirely his to decide as to if he stays here by playing better or goes elsewhere. So Greenway, Greenway, it's a simple one. For Matt Dumba, it is a little bit more interesting in Dumba's case. And so we will take a look at what Matt Dumba needs to do here in the second half of the season as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by our new sports betting partner for Locked On, the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that is even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown, plus over-unders on passing yards, pass attempts, rushing yards, rush attempts for the Super Bowl as well. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. 
So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Continuing today's episode of Locked On Wild, once again, thanks for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you checked out the Locked On NHL podcast as we gear up for the All-Star Game coming up this weekend. Continuing to look at three players with something to prove here in the second half of the season, we move to Matt Dumba. And the story with Dumba, it's one we know well at this point. All signs pointing to both team, both team and player uh, moving on here at the uh, the end of the season, whether it be at the trade deadline this year or in the off season with Dumba just uh, just heading into free agency. That's not the question here. The question is, what can Matt Dumba do, knowing that that all is looming, and? Uh, what can he do here in his his final few games, final few weeks and months as a member of this wild team? And I think it boils down for Dumba to just playing a smarter style and a simpler style of hockey than he has been playing here uh, to start the season. There have been a lot of turnovers for Dumba. There have been a lot of penalties for Dumba at the beginning of the season. But I think that stems from Dumba still trying to do too much to uh, help out this team. You know, you, you get beat down the ice um, heading towards the, uh, the wild net and uh, reaction is just to try to slow the player down any way you can, which leads to hooking, tripping penalties. A lot of the penalties that Dumba has committed this season have been of the high sticking variety. And so you can eliminate those from your game by simply playing a little bit smarter uh, as the season wears on. And, you know, in the turnover department, and not to say Dumba's the only player that commits turnovers, there are plenty of guys all the way up to the top of this roster that turn the puck over their fair share. But for Dumba, it just seems as though a lot of the turnovers that he commits are in front of the net, looking down the ice to try to get something going uh, to move the puck offensively. You're trying to hit that home run swing or trying to hit a double to pull a baseball analogy. There's nothing wrong with being a singles hitter. And so for Dumba, I think if he just looks a little bit more intermediately on the ice when he has the puck, just trying to advance it up the ice and allow the offense to get things set up. I think that will help uh, with some of the turnovers that uh, that he's committed so far this season. And defensively, defense was not really ever a strong point in Matt Dumba's game. And you look at what the injuries have taken from him on offense over the last few seasons. It's just going to require him, I think, to play a little bit more of a safer style, especially defensively, to where if you have a player that you're trying to go one-on-one -on -one with, we, we saw this one in, um, it was a few games ago in which Dumba and Zuccarello were both in front of the, the net, and Dumba had left the front to uh, to pursue the player that he was was in charge of and Zuccarello also at the same time left the front of the net and it led to a goal for the opponent. And so I, I think if Dumba maybe just plays and airs a little more on the side of caution, especially defensively, I think if you simplify that could help Dumba out here uh, as the rest of the season goes. And honestly, you know, the song that we'll use for Dumba is the uh, the great hit by Toby Keith. I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Is there still going to be some flashes in there? And so if, if Dumba gets into one of those situations where he is, you know, maybe feeling like he can assist um, in, on offense or 
wants to step up and and lay a hit on somebody on the ice, that's fine. He just he doesn't necessarily have to be the guy to do that all the time. And knowing your limits, I think, is a big thing. If he is is helping out on the play from the top of the zone and maybe in the back of his head wants to unleash that clap bomb to try to um to get one past the goalie, you know, maybe you pass it to somebody on either side. We've seen him have success with some of those cleanup goals right in front of the net. So just taking inventory of, of your game right now and uh, and maybe taking a little step back and just trying to do less um, and and playing a little smarter out there on the ice, I think is a way that uh, that Hartman or that uh, Matt Dumba can help the team out and still contribute to wins down the stretch, whatever the outcome may be. We don't know if he'll be traded at the deadline. There have certainly been rumblings about that. We don't know if this saga will play out all the way through the end of the season and end with him just exploring op- other opportunities uh, via free agency. But it's the same thing with Jordan Greenway that uh, that we mentioned with him in that whatever you do, the rest of the season here, it's an audition for whatever comes next. It's an opportunity to put some good film on the ice for the next team, whether that be via trade or the next contract you sign in the off season. And so just, just treat these games as such and try to go out on top here um, as, as his wild tenure comes to an end. And uh, maybe that will help kind of light a little bit of a fire. But I think as opposed to needing to see more from a guy like Jordan Greenway, I think for Dumba, if if he just simplifies things uh, a bit as we uh, as we go through the second half, he's playing with Jonas Brodeen as his line mate. And so I think if if there's some simplification to the game, let's see if that can assist. Uh, Dumba in uh, in having a better second half here of the season, and you know you look at both of those both of those suggestions for Greenway and for Hartman, or and for uh, for Dumba. Some of the same applies to Ryan Hartman, and so to finish today's episode of Locked On Wild, we'll talk about what Ryan Hartman needs to do to have a better second half of the season. That is on the way after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you as always for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen of the day, make sure you check out the Locked On NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the NHL. Locked On NHL is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. It's no secret Ryan Hartman had a frustrating start to the season and whether that be injuries that kept him out of the lineup turnovers the big one for Hartman has been penalties uh in the season so far in a full season the last year for Hartman he had um i think it was 95 yes 95 penalty minutes last year in 82 games in 26 games this year, he's got 47. So he is almost halfway to uh, that total in substantially less games. And you've got instances in which uh, ended up not liking a call in one particular game to where he um, chirped the refs enough to get a um, a, mis- a misconduct penalty and uh, and then ended up getting a fighting major uh, later on in the game after uh, coming back in for the uh, the second period. And so for Hartman, I understand the frustration is there with not having produced at the same level as last year. But use this as an opportunity to just reset, just full reset and forget about what happened in the first part of the season and just come out here in the second half and just play your game. And whether it be on the grief line, if it is to be a pest and to frustrate opponents and to play more of a defensive style, go out and do it. 
if the opportunity comes later to get back onto the line with Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Zuccarello, deal with that when it happens. But at this point, I think Hartman was just trying to do too much with the team struggling to start the year and um, just, I think, kind of got in his his own head a little bit um, in the early part of the season. But, you know, the that 0-3 start, the team has has rebounded since and they have been playing substantially better hockey since then. So just contribute uh, to the uh, the winning ways of this team as opposed to contributing to some of those losing plays that um, that end up costing this team games. You know, some of the penalties, the uh, penalty against the Tampa Bay Lightning, then that unfortunate bounce on the uh, game-winning goal for Tampa Bay. Uh, the, that kind of stuff happens. You just got to shake it off and not let it affect you uh, the rest of the game. And so for Hartman, our song choice here is Living on the Edge. We've talked with Kevin Gorg about this in that the Wild like Hartman being kind of that edgy, annoying type player that is tough to play against for opponents. And I think having him on a line with Jewel Erickson Eck is Probably a good fit to get him back to playing that sort of style, but also knowing the limits as to what you can do and cannot do in that style of play. So it's a lot of what has gone wrong with these guys is I think just pressing and trying to do too much. If you simplify your game and just get to playing some quality minutes out there, um, again, a lot of the home run type plays are leading to turnovers for this team. And so if everybody just takes a step back and tries to go more the intermediate route as opposed to the the long touchdown passes all the way to the opposing zone, some of this stuff is going to clean itself up. And for Hartman, I think if he can put together a stretch of games where he is able to get a, a few goals here and there, you know, he had a stretch earlier in the season where we thought that may have been the beginning of him coming out of it. And then some of the same sorts of things started to happen. I mean, he had the stretch from December 31st to January 7th in which he had three goals in three games. And you thought, okay, I think, uh, I think he may be starting to, uh, to find his way out of it. But uh, since then has not been on the uh, the scoring sheets, at least as far as goals go, has had a few assists here and there, but just needs to just get back to going out there and and helping the team win, while not being worried about the individual production that uh, that is lacking from last season to this season. And so, for all of these guys, if they are able to use this as a perfect opportunity for a reset. And show us some some semblance of last year or in previous years in some cases. Just show us a little something here to help get this team into a, uh, a solid footing in the postseason. And um, just let the rest happen as it goes. So we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. First game on Monday, we talked about the schedule for the month of February. We talked about uh, a lot of different things here this week on Lockdown Wild, trying to get us ready for the start of the second half of the season, although we're over halfway through the number of games. So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what sort of jump this team has coming out of the break. Of course, you've got Kirill Kaprizov taking place in the uh, taking part in the All Star Game festivities here this weekend. So we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about how he did on Monday, and uh, we'll just set our sights further on the second half and what needs to happen for this Wild team to uh, get off on the right foot and uh, make things difficult for the teams in front of them in the Central Division standings. That will wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories in sports all in one place. Locked on Sports Today is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. 
just like Locked on Wild is. So make sure that you take some time to follow us on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on social media and our newest additions, Amazon Music and TikTok, so you don't miss out on any of our content throughout the course of the week. We're keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.